I'll say seriously, uh, it'll go downhill from there. I'll say seriously, we look forward to this because it's our opportunity to thank everybody. We've had a great year. Uh, our employees work incredibly hard. Uh, the spouses of our employees uh, you know, support us and uh, withstand a lot. Uh, the spouses who have left our employees, well, fuck them, they're gone, but um, there, there are a lot of those. Uh, we, we were talking about this firm. It's kind of like the first year of university. You come in in the first four months. You generally break up with somebody, gain 15 pounds, um, and then everything's good. You look good, though, right? I'm good. Good. Um, all right. I'm happy there's a podium because I have a lot to say. Don't worry. So uh, what do I say now? Okay, yeah, this was a good year. No, it, it really was a good year. Uh, we beat some sales milestones. Uh, we were actually close to a big sales milestone, and I can't say who because it's confidential, but somebody here called us at 4 p.m. today and said we got the contract, so it was like, that's great. So we'll keep the bar on till 7. So um, no, but we're, we're very happy. Uh, my partner, Sam, who I like to talk about a lot, is still here. Uh, he and I started consulting uh, back when some of the people we hire now uh, were wearing Spider-Man pajamas. So that was a long time ago. Matt McClellan, I'm not sure if he's here yet. Um, he may still wear Spider-Man pajamas, but that's okay. That's okay. We, uh, we continue with our focus on customer-based strategy. Uh, we work with financial services players. We work in retail and consumer goods, which you would know if you hear me blabbing on TV all the time. Uh, private healthcare. And in addition, uh, we do a fair amount of work uh, with private equity funds, more so uh, than we have. And we have a strategy which we've begun to implement a year ago of being private equity funds first call when they have a deal. And so uh, we're focused on that. Uh, it's kind of working. Uh, we're a year in, so we're very happy. Private equity players are kind of funny uh, to work with, I have to tell you. Um, they're incredibly wealthy. Uh, they're some of the wealthiest people around, but they're all like so understated. And they're all so polite, and like you work with the guys from Teachers, and I was like, thank you for coming to our office at Young and Finch, it's so nice of you. And uh, it's very off-putting for me, right? And they're, by the way, you leave their office and they like, they took 400 grand from you, and they did it so politely, you don't know what happened. And um, you guys may remember, I used to be in the construction business in Montreal, so I'm used to getting contracts from like my cousin Vinny. Um, he has a ring on his finger the size of a steak, he's ashing his butt out on my hand, and he's screaming at me, so. Uh, it's a different world. Anyway, here we are. That, was, that wasn't a, uh, I thought about cutting it, but here we are. It was okay, it's okay, good. We'll, we'll keep going. Page one of eight, okay. Uh, but speeches are hard for me. Uh, nice to see you, thank you, Mike, welcome. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. You're on my list, good. Um, speeches are hard because I, I those of you who know me know that I, I, I worry a little bit about what I'm going to say. So I start these speeches and I write them in my head and then they get rambling or and I sort of say, you know, are they going to be inappropriate, right? Uh, is the filter going to work? I go, uh, I like to talk about the fact that I go on TV because it's, I, I like it and Peter Armstrong's here. And sometimes I, I go on TV and I look at Peter and I say, I'm nervous. And he's like, no, don't be nervous. You'll be fine. He, I, he, he doesn't realize um, how nervous I am because I'm worried that I'm going to be standing there and the filter's just not going to work. Uh, I'm going to say something that is completely ridiculous. If I were a bit more like some of the politicians to the south of us, uh, probably I wouldn't worry about that. Probably I would just say, well, the less the filter works, the more popular you will be. It'll all be okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm confident at times. I'm not, I, I'm not quite that confident. Or if I were a bit like our own prime minister... Mr. Fluffyhead, uh, I would actually not say anything controversial ever. I would just uh, have a whole platform about being a nice progressive guy, uh, say things that people like, and then end my term having a progressive but broke regime. But that's not, okay, no, that's, uh, that's a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing. But tonight, tonight we're kicking off the Christmas season, and uh, my wife uh, supports me a lot. She's very embarrassed by my behavior at times like Saturday evenings and Sunday mornings when I'm tweeting about stuff. She's like, you can't say that, you can't say that. So I thought tonight uh, I would sort of keep it, keep it real, you know, or keep it something, keep it light, keep it non-controversial. So I'm going to talk about Canada. Even cynical people, uh, I think, would have a hard time being negative about Canada. It's an amazing place to live and do business. It's relatively fair, open, honest, democratic, Wealthy, productive, we have culture, we have nice people, 
We have resources, natural resources, beauty, good education. We have upward social mobility, I mean, for the rich. But, um, uh, and so generally speaking, it works. We, uh, we aren't without our issues. We do have some flaws, controversies. Uh, on a serious note, I think our First Nations history is abominable. Uh, we have the tar sands. We have those cute, cute little baby seals, whack. Um, which, uh, I'm not saying which side I'm on. I'm just saying it's a controversy. I'm just saying some people disagree. We have um, supply management and dairy. We have in our country the world's largest mafia clubhouse and training grounds, otherwise known as the city of Montreal. We have, uh, they're, <laughs> they're in a province that uh, decides they want to separate um, every uh, few years. Luckily, they, uh, they elect someone to lead them who comes from the nut house, so that's, that's okay. But um, when you think about Canada, it's pretty good. And I think it's good in and of itself, but I think it's also good when you compare it to everywhere else in the world. And uh, I've lived in and worked in a few places, not a ton. I'm not that well-traveled. Uh, but I have, I have been around, and uh, I sort of read The Economist, I mean, the half the first page. So I know, I know what's going on. And you look around, and it seems like every other country in the world, I have to read this list, it's either too classist, too poor, too corrupt, too drunk. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. My new EA is from Britain. I'm sorry. Uh, too racist too war-torn, too hot, too bureaucratic, too left-leaning, too right-leaning, too violent, uh, run by insane power freaks. Uh, I realize, by the way, everything I just said describes Russia in the summer. Um, too German, uh, or maybe only Germany, uh, just kind of weird, uh, or the food sucks, but, but not Canada. I mean, although our food's not great, but it's better than Cuba's because that food is honestly shit. Okay, so um, tonight, um, you like that one, eh? I like that one. Like, how do they give that to you? Fuck. Fuck. What's that? We had a nice lunch. We had a nice lunch. Good. Good. We're moving on. Uh, so tonight, we're going to get serious now. Why Canada? So uh, partially because our guest speaker, who we got to talk tonight, wanted to talk about Canada, and he's kind of a big shot. So I said, all right, Canada, great topic. So, uh, but I do think that Canada is at a very interesting stage of our development, economically speaking. We've had a lot of great companies uh, in this country. Uh, I'm going to list a few. You guys will probably have others that you're thinking about. Loblaw showed the world uh, how to screw its suppliers, but how to do private label and grocery. HBC is one of the oldest retailers in the world. Canadian Tire, uh, in my opinion, has held its own against Walmart and then Target, like came and went in a flash. Uh, and even so far, we'll see uh, Amazon. Uh, Bombardier is a company I think we still should be proud of. I don't want to get into it. Peter and I have gotten into it a few times. There are a lot of issues, but Bombardier uh, has done a lot on the world stage. Apple has perfected the iPhone, but we cannot forget that the addiction that we all have was created right here uh, by BlackBerry. We have Kushtar, who's uh, leading the world in convenience stores. We have uh, Saputo, who has managed, uh, I think they're maybe the only company in the world who has this deftly managed the protection of both the supply management system, so the government, and Sicilian Hitman. I mean, they find a way, Saputo, they're amazing. Um, Four Seasons, if you live in Montreal, you would know a bit more about what I'm talking about. Uh, Four Seasons, in my opinion, in my opinion, has done more to define a luxury category than any other player anywhere in the world. I think they are more uh, defining of their category than Mercedes, more than Tiffany's, uh, more than anybody you could think of. We have Lululemon, Cirque du Soleil, Aldo, Canada Goose, Tim Hortons, Mech, Roots, although I've slammed them, but they're still pretty cool. They made a lot of dough, those guys. Uh, IMAX, The Beebs, um, I'm sure. Well, he's a brand. The guy does well. Um, but interestingly, we have all these companies, and I, and I think that the world thinks of us as hewers of wood and drawers of water. And I think they think of us as bland but nice people. And I think the question is, you know, do we think of that of ourselves as well? And should we think about that? You know, do we think of ourselves more as peacekeepers or more as conquerors? And should we think of ourselves as captains of industry? And I think for me, the question is whether we take the successes that we have and then use those to have other successes. You know, we talk about Nortel and BlackBerry, and it's interesting. I think that there are people in Canada who are only happy when they failed because I think the Canadian psyche is such that we don't like people who are very successful and who flaunt their success. Uh, and I think what's amazing about 
uh, or what I, what I lament about their situation is not that they failed because I think companies failed, but that there was nobody who came right after them. Because if they were in the U.S., there would be another player right after them. If you think about the story of Apple, so much of the story of Apple is the story of how they wanted to kill Microsoft. And if you think about all the great companies in the U.S., there was another one competing with them. Whereas in Canada, we had our great company, and they were sort of waiting for them to fizzle out, and then the competitor was somewhere else. Um, so, where am I? So, uh, the industry where uh, I think that we've had two world leaders right in Canada homegrown who are competing with each other is the coalition loyalty space, uh, and of course, now you only have one. Um, so when I think about Canada, I sort of think Canada needs to decide if they should focus on a few industries, a few capabilities, and really drive home stuff that we're known for. Uh, I sort of feel like, you know, Canada needs a strategy and then a rebranding and a five-year implementation plan. Of course, I think everybody needs that. But, um, but you, you should think, like, you know, everybody talks about tech, you know. Everybody wants to know who's going to be the next Amazon, who's going to be the next uh, Google, Facebook, Facebook et cetera, right? Uh, and I think that's interesting, uh, but I don't think those are the only industries that are going on in the world, and I don't think we have to decide that we have to be that. We can decide that. I think that when the, the Amazon thing was happening, I tweeted about it today uh, along with a friend who agreed with me, uh, I was not in favor of the Amazon headquarters necessarily coming here. I was in favor of us saying we have some tech giants of our own, and if we decide that we want to promote them, we should promote them and let them get the top talent. And we should believe that we can get there. Um, there are other industries that we could decide to grow. I mean, in Canada, I'm just trying to think who's in the audience, and I'll get shit for this. Like, you could be a chimpanzee and run a Canadian bank for profit in this country. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Uh, that's in this country. But maybe we should tell the Canadian banks, we're not going to protect you as much here, and we want you to go everywhere else. Because since 2008, it was clear to the rest of the world the Canadian banks were very strong, and they were worth admiration. Uh, but when you look at it, a couple of our banks have gone international and really made it. But when you think about the leaders in the global banking world, nobody thinks about Royal Bank. I mean, maybe people in the industry who are working on deals thinking about them, but people aren't thinking about them. They're thinking about Citi, and they're thinking about HSBC, and they're thinking about Barclays. And the question is, is that because we don't want to think of that? We don't think of ourselves in that way? Is that because our government doesn't enable us to think that way? Um, so I'll be interested to hear what Mike has to say on that. I should probably move on to Mike because I'm talking too long. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce Mike Katchen. Uh, this I have to actually read. I can't bullshit about this. Um, what, sorry? Mike's a cool guy. Uh, He's very successful. I met him once at the TV studio. You remember meeting me once? Yeah, great, yeah. Um, and uh, he's done a great thing. You founded Wealthsimple only in 2014, which is three years ago, which is wild. When we think about the degree to which Wealthsimple is on our minds and a, an ever-present brand, uh, and I'm sure the bankers who we just spoke about are thinking about Wealthsimple and they're not as happy as he is and we are for his success. Uh, they now have a billion in assets under management, and my uh, opinion, which I'm sure you will all share, is that that is a small fraction of what they will have three years from now. 40,000 people enrolled. Uh, and, you know, when you look at it, you sort of say, you know, is Wellsimple great because they're one of the disruptors, they're one of the people who found a techno technological innovation, uh, or did they take something that somebody else was ignoring? Did they take the population that banks decided they didn't have time for because they didn't have enough money yet. Uh, they said it's about serving people who are not otherwise well served. And I think you'd find that in disruption generally, people are solving a problem because other people didn't solve it. Uh, so Mike, I'm sure we'll share a little bit about that. Uh, you're hoping to get, what, 30, 40 new accounts tonight? Is that the, that's the goal? Uh, but he'll also have a lot of pointed views on Canada, so we'll look very much forward to that. And then uh, we'll take some Q&A.